cutting their teeth in truck pulling competitions, Nate Baylor and Ben Burnworth quickly found out it was harder to make power with power stroke engines than it was for the Cummins guys. Rather than being discouraged or jumping ship away from power strokes, Nate and Ben doubled down and worked even harder to build a 7.3 liter power stroke that could keep up with the competition. Nate Baylor and Ben Burnworth own unlimited diesel performance in Bremen, Ohio. The 5,000 square foot, nine employee diesel shop has been in business since 2004 and specializes in maintenance and repair work, stock rebuilds, and performance engine builds for the Power Stroke engine family. Armed with years of experience, a full machine shop in-house, and the capability to build their own injectors in-house as well, Nate and Ben built the ultimate mechanical P-Pump 7.3 liter Power Stroke engine for truck pulling. And I'll give you all the details in this episode of Diesel of the Week. This video is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Visit amsoil.com for more information. Hey everyone, I'm Greg Jones for Engine Builder, and today we're talking about Unlimited Diesel Performance's mechanical P-Pump 7.3 liter power stroke build for their 1981 Ford F-350 pulling truck named Smoke and Addiction. As truck pulling got more and more competitive and guys were getting more and more power, the Fords unfortunately lacked the power needed to keep up. Baylor remembers seeing a P-Pump 7.3 setup done by Tom Termolin of TFS for Ben Miller and his truck Double Overtime that competed in the Superstock class. Nate and Ben wanted to emulate that build on a smaller scale, so Unlimited Diesel sent a block to Tom for some machine work and their 7.3 build was underway. As it got legs, Unlimited Diesel turned to nearby shops such as D&J Precision Machine for some added assistance. Here's Nate to tell you more. Drew at d &J got on board with us. We were trying to figure out what we were gonna do for cylinder heads and intake manifold and all of that kind of stuff. We sent a mock-up block to him and some cylinder heads and he started drawing things up in master cam. And before we knew it, we were taken and basically cutting the head in half. And he had made a, a, a basically a billet aluminum insert for the intake to really be able to take you know full advantage of the intake ports and everything and, and do what he wanted to do porting wise to get us enough flow through the heads and so we we cut the heads in half he filled them with epoxy and made it the aluminum outer section to it and then that enabled us to run uh, individual plenum uh, you know runners and he built the whole top intake for us, basically, you know, giant plenum on top, and we were all scratching our heads trying to figure out, okay, we're running this eight-cylinder inline up down through the valley. We've got to be able to get the injector lines to the injectors, and we ended up coming up with a design and then running the injector lines over top of the plenum still. Unlimited Diesel also opted to use a Komatsu-style fuel injector because they needed something that would be long enough for the seven three heads. The first idea was to go up through the valve cover, but they've since revised that. We found out on the dyno that the long injector was causing us some issues, so we, we wanted to get to that shorter injector, and that, that picked us up some power. Now we're using a, a billet shide injector that uh, we're running a longer injector line nut down through the valve cover. Run a full dry sump system on it. It's actually a six stage pump, four suctions, and uh, we run a, a main pressure section to the engine, uh, and then we run a separate pressure to the turbo, so the turbo system's all self-contained. As the 7.3 kept gaining power, Unlimited Diesel found issues with the cylinder heads and the original set of pistons. We ended up getting the engine so hot that we cracked the cylinder heads, and so that was kind of a learning experience. Drew built us a set of billet heads that basically then we could go in and the sky was the limit. You know, we raised the ceiling height on the, you know, we, we made the heads taller so we could get exactly what we wanted for flow wise. He moved the injector angles to get exactly what we wanted there for fuel. When we did that, then he made us a set of pistons as well. So we're using FSR pistons. Uh, which incorporates a steel ring land. And that was part of our issue with the uh, melting down of the piston and stuff that we had in the original engine was beating the ring lands out of it, basically. And, and nobody had this technology. And then Drew 
uh, came up with this forging that basically incorporated a steel ring land in it, which is exactly what we needed. Originally, Unlimited Diesel ran their 7.3 in the 3.0 Smoothbore Limited Pro Stock class. With the cubic inch displacement of the 7.3 and the V8 configuration, the three inch inducer on the turbo was a huge limiting factor. We were always making decent power, but when we were making 1400 horsepower, a guy with the 5.9 or 6.7, whatever, you know, they're making 1750. So we were just always constantly behind with all the, uh, the turbo restrictions and everything. So the latest engine we built for this thing still, still incorporated the stock block and everything but we found our limit on the connecting rods. Our current setup right now is a 15 millimeter pump uh, based off of a Mac V8. We're running a set of shied triple feed billet body injectors and uh, we're running a Weimer 4.4 turbo, which would basically put us into like an unlimited single class or a run what you run style class. The 7.3 liter Power Stroke also features a Waterman fuel pump on the back side of the R&R pump, a taper lock design 11 inch damper that Riverside Engines helped with, and Ferreira valves. To keep things running smooth at high horsepower, Unlimited Diesel also set looser tolerances in the engine. With that R&R dry sump pump, we're running about 130 to, uh, I think it's 100, 125 to 130 pounds of oil pressure is what we're running uh, with that setup. Mm. And we set the bearing tolerances a little bit looser uh, than what most guys do. That way you've got a good cushion inside of there uh, to try to keep the parts from hitting each other. The looser tolerance, the heavier weight oil, and the higher pressure when every time we've taken this thing apart, whenever we've had uh, a, a, a breakdown or whatever, the bearings look amazing. As it stands now, the 7.3 has made nearly 2,200 horsepower, but the rods and the block need to be upgraded in order to gain even more horsepower. Fortunately, Unlimited Diesel just got a new RMC CNC mill that will help the shop produce its own billet rods and block. And still swinging the stock crankshaft. Uh, we haven't had any issues you know, with the crankshaft even at that power level. We've bent this connecting rod. We're looking at doing something different connecting rod wise. We're looking into doing our own connecting rods. Part of the reason behind buying this mill again was we were having issues with uh, this factory block. We've been through three or four different stock blocks now. Um, and every single one of them will crack along the outside of the driver's side of the block. Basically at the bottom of the head stud hole, they always crack. We bent this connecting rod and found that this engine, when we, when we did all that damage, it actually started to crack the block from the inside as well. From that perspective, we decided that we were no longer gonna use a stock block anymore. And uh, we're in the process of right now of building a, a billet aluminum block. With billet rods and a billet block on the docket, and the best setup to date on Unlimited Diesel's mechanical P-Pump 7.3 liter power stroke, we can't wait to see what horsepower levels this thing can achieve next. That does it for this episode of Diesel of the Week. Shout out to Amsoil, our series sponsor. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our channel. And remember, if you have an engine you'd like to see featured, please email me at gjones at babcox.com. Until next time, thanks for watching.